Hi everybody, Jill here with a new video challenging myself to use my small 3x5 jelly plate. I have a lot of supplies sitting that I have never even used or haven't used for two years. I think this little plate I used one time about two years ago. So I got out my small brayer and as you just saw some texture making tools and some paint. I don't really have a plan except to use my plate as a stamp. Um, I thought I'd make a double page and let's see where we go from there. So I've been using the jelly plate on a empty CD case um, to make it more like a stamp and I wanted to try taking it off and using it in my hand with just the little plastic cover on the back so it would be more like a random stamp. I wouldn't get the entire rectangular print so I wouldn't have all square edges on my page but that didn't really work. It was awkward, it was hard to hold on to, it didn't press nicely. So here I am putting it back on the CD case. Anything hard would work, a piece of plexi, anything you have on hand. about here I get a little frustrated because I can't fit my stamp in near the binding edge of the book in the seam there so I do have to pull it back off in order to get some paint in those white edges by the binding. I had lots of colors picked out and set aside, although I really didn't have an overall plan. When I decided to go with the red rather than the teal, I looked at my texture plates and I had one with hearts and I thought, well, we're close to Valentine's Day, let's go with the red hearts. That was nowhere in my intentions when I first started, but you never know where you're going to go.
like I said, I haven't used this little jelly plate much, but what I do like about it is it's not a great big production. My whole cleanup here was one baby wipe, cleaned both my plate and my brayer. Uh, the time I used my big jelly plate, I had papers everywhere, paint everywhere, and it just seemed like a whole lot of mess. And here I just picked up a brush and a little bit of that original light peach color to fill in some of the blank spots, blend it, make it seem a little more cohesive. I decided not to add any more colors here. I thought this was enough. So I picked up a charcoal pencil off my table. I wasn't sure what I was going to use for the face, but you can see from my gestures there, I was deciding where a face would fit. I thought it would fit right there. I didn't use any grid lines. I often don't anymore. And my eyes do end up a little bit crooked, but that doesn't bother me. So I was happy with the composition on the right hand page, but I had no idea what to put on the left. So I have these masks that I had cut out of magazines. You know how you cut a picture out of a magazine and cover both sides with packing tape? I also have not used those in a very long time. So I got them out, tried them out, decided on the one profile and thought I would just make a simple silhouette. So I outlined her in charcoal. And now I'm going back with a paper stump and just blending out my charcoal face. So here I have put a coat of 
fixative on so my charcoal won't smear or blend anymore. And I got out some pens to start some doodling. I had two black pens, a jelly roll and a uniball, two white pens, a jelly roll and a signo, a flare, that was a Papermate flare red pen, and this is a Jane Davenport fountain pen with red ink in it. I wasn't sure about the two reds. They're both water soluble, so I didn't know how they were gonna work on top of the acrylic paint, and especially on top of the fixative. I knew the black pens, the black and the white, would go over anything. So here I'm just starting some doodling, and uh, there's not a whole lot to say. I will say that I have always liked to doodle, but this style of doodling using the the images and shit, not images, the shapes that are there, is mostly inspired by Christy Sobolewski, Golf Sprite. She does what she calls doodle pages, where she uses stencils and then uses those shapes to fill in lines and cross hatching and doodling. And uh, as I was doing it, I thought, wow, this is exactly like what Christy does. When I write in my journals or on my art, especially when I'm going to put the video or picture on Instagram, I like to write in scribbles. It's therapeutic for me to write, but I really don't want anybody to read what I've written. And I also like the way it looks. It becomes part of the design, part of the background, not necessarily something you would sit and read. So I started with the Jane Davenport pen, and it was skipping and not writing nicely. And I thought, wow, maybe I should try the flare. So I switched over to the Papermate flare here, and it was even worse. What I realized is neither one wanted to write near the charcoal where the workable fixative was. And that was my fear when I started working with water-soluble pens. But it ended up okay. It faded out in parts, but like I said, it's really part of the design, not anything anybody's going to read.
This doodling part is very long and tedious for you to watch, even at eight times speed. It's much easier to do curled up on the sofa than on camera. Trying to hold the book so that you can see it and stopping to make decisions with people watching is definitely not the same thing as sitting and watching a video or listening to something on YouTube while you doodle on the sofa. So I'm pretty much finished here. I could go on doodling forever, and I did do some more doodling after I was done on camera. I just couldn't help it. And I learned a few things with this page. I don't like the way the two pages work together. I like each page by itself, but I think the composition is all wrong. Um, the 
but this is only my art journal and lots of pages work independently, not as a two-page spread. I also find that I'm not finding a huge desire to get my jelly plate out and do it again right away. So I'm not sure it's something I would want to get rid of. I will surely hold on to that, but it's not a burning desire to keep using it. So I hope you like the video. I hope you get inspired to pull out something you haven't used in a while. And I hope you give me a thumbs up. See you soon.